I'm pretty excited to make this my first video of the new year. This is going to be sort of my conclusion to Craftmas, although Craftmas is already over. I did want to finish the entire ski outfit. If you missed that, as a quick recap, I knit a 1950s ski sweater, which I absolutely loved and I learned so much from it. You can watch the videos about that up above. The whole set also came with a bonnet and a pair of mittens. This time, I thought that we would go through the process of finishing the entire set and then taking them out in the snow, which honestly right now is the perfect time because we've been just having snowstorm after snowstorm. I can't wait. Let's get started. I've been a bit sick the last few days since Craftmas is over, so while I've been up for knitting, I haven't really been up for sharing much of it with you all, unfortunately, but now I'm feeling a little bit better, so I wanted to show you how far I've come on my accessories. I started with a bonnet, and I have finished the, I guess, front piece of it, or the piece that kind of goes across your head and ears like this, and now I have to work on the back portion of it, which is also worked in a color chart, so this is supposed to mimic the sweater a little bit, which is super exciting. I also took the learnings for my sweater and I am now catching my floats every four stitches rather than every seven and I think that it looks so much neater already. I'm also carrying the longer floats back across so I don't have any long ends or anything like that to weave in. So what I have to do now is four or five rows for the back of the bonnet and now I'm back to doing these little, um, I like someone called these snowflakes. So I'm going to do the snowflake pattern and the bonnet will be shaped kind of like an arch almost and that'll be for the back of the head that this front piece will then be sewn onto. It's actually a really nice cozy day to be inside and I'm gonna enjoy probably some coffee and some YouTube videos <laughs> and rest my voice a little bit longer. fully finished with the back portion of this bonnet and I will say I wish there was a little bit clearer instructions on this. I had a chart all the way up to here and I followed the chart exactly and that was super helpful and then it gave me like two lines of decreasing rows saying oh and just continue following the pattern. It has you, I don't, let me see if I can show you. Okay so it has you decrease in the center of the rows here and it says yeah just continue to have the decreases there and just knit the rest of the snowflakes in the pattern as usual. But what does that mean? Does that mean to keep the distance between these two snowflakes constant so these would be moving out like this? Or does it mean what I did where I just kind of kept the snowflakes moving along kind of the same line until they met almost at the top? I don't know. <laughs> I interpret it my own way. I wish there was a chart for the entirety of the back of the bonnet, but I still think that this is pretty cute. I'm pretty happy with how this looks. The next step that the pattern says to do is to attach the, the front piece of the bonnet to the back piece or to sew the back piece in place. I think I'm gonna have to stretch the front a little bit to fit the back. The lengths are a little different, but before I start doing any of that work, I think I'm going to knit the eye cord for that. And then I will assemble the bonnet. At this point, I had already knit the eye cord and I stitched the front in place to the back of the bonnet and now I am crocheting on a beading. I followed the instructions I found for a 1940s skirt pattern, but this is basically like a little casing to hold the eye cord in place to tie my bonnet in place. And then I threaded my eye cord through that. And then aside from weaving in some ends, the bonnet was basically done and I could move on to knitting the mittens. 
Before I dive straight into knitting for the mittens, I kind of wanted to let you all know I was offering some stickers and mugs that I had designed available for you all to have as well, but I didn't really enjoy working with a production company and instead I've started creating everything myself. And at that time I had just finished making the die cut stickers, which you can find in the link to my Etsy shop below, which I'm very excited about. And I have been working on designing some sticker sheets. I love stickers, I like journaling, and I was thinking about what kind of stickers I want to use in my own personal journals and what I want to use for my knitting journal. So I sat down and I sketched out ideas, I tried out different ways of making them and arranging them, and I think that I have two sets of sticker sheets that I'm really happy with. The first one includes knitting, crocheting, and yarn themed <laughs> with a lot of little extra details that you can use in your journals. And the second one, which you might have seen the original draft for, is for my knitting journal, which I will be using this entire sticker sheet for, well not the entire sticker sheet, but I'll be using some of the stickers from the sticker sheet to lock the entry in my craft journal for these accessories. If you're interested in buying any of these stickers and <laughs> supporting me that way, which I really appreciate, you can find the link to my Etsy shop down below, but you do more than enough already just by watching, commenting, liking, subscribing, all of that so thank you again so much and let's get right back to knitting for the mittens. Knitting the mittens I am going to do on double pointed needles and I'll do it two at a time. There are a few options to knitting things two at a time like sleeves and socks and mittens. One of them is to do two at a time on circular needles with like a really cool cast on method and I've done it before but for me mentally it takes quite a big load to get that set up and at the moment because I'm not doing too well, I just decided to cast my project onto two separate sets of double pointed needles. I also, when it's such small circumference knitting, like mittens and socks and things and sleeves, I prefer personally using double pointed needles. The way that I'm going to knit two at a time is a little bit less fancy or lower tech than the really cool uh, circular needle method, but I just cast on on both and then I knit row one on this one and row one on this one. Although I I'm not exactly sure how others knit two at a time on double pointed needles, but I don't do row one, row one, and then row two, row two. How I do it is I do row one, row one, row two, row two, row three, row three, row four, row four, row five, row five, row six. So I'm doing two rows at once on one set of double pointed needles, but I'm still going back and forth between my two pairs of mittens. Does that make sense? I don't know, nothing's very clear to me right now <laughs> in my brain. What I'm gonna do for this evening is probably knit the three inches of ribbing at the bottom and see if I'm in the mood to work on the decreases and the color pattern. Yeah, let's get to some more knitting. The next morning. January 1st and I always find it's great to start the new year with some lovely knits. So I have started both of the mittens. I have been successfully knitting them two at a time. It's been working quite well. The women's mittens are a little bit different from the men's mittens. I think I just said mittens. Sounds close enough. And they are knit mittens. <laughs> so the girls or women's have a little bit of a flare at the cuff and then they come a little bit tighter at the wrist. Now I'm supposed to work 10 rounds in pattern and then the thumb gusset starts. The 10 rounds in pattern will start with the red diamonds. And this time I'm not gonna forget the red diamonds because I forgot the red triangles on the bottom of my sleeves. But now that I'm wearing the mittens over the sleeves, maybe you'll see the red diamonds on the mittens instead of the sleeves. So I won't forget that this time. I'm gonna grab my two balls of red yarn and go ahead and start 10 rows of the pattern and I will check back in with you when we get to the thumb. Oh. And one more thing that I nearly forgot. The mittens are knit in the round, so this color work is going to be so much easier. <laughs> no more crazy long floats or yarn colors ending on the wrong side of a row. It's all in the round. It's gonna be so much better. I'm actually very, very happy about it. So this should go a little bit more smoothly for me.
finished both of my mittens color work chart up to where I'm now going to split for the thumb hole. I don't know if you can tell, but I am nearly falling asleep. So I think I might go take a quick nap before I continue, but I just wanted to brag for a second and say that, look, I didn't forget the red triangles or diamonds this time. So I'll actually have that pattern on my mittens. The other reason why I want to wait and take a nap is because I have to remember to make a left and a right version of the mittens. And I'm just afraid that if I am this tired, I'm going to mess it up at some point and accidentally end up with two of the same hand, which is just not helpful. So I'm going to go take a bit of a rest. And I'll see you again very soon to continue working on these mittens. The next day. I have knit to pass the part where you put the thumb hole stitches on a separate holder. I have started a little bit the color work of the skier. It's a little harder to see, I feel like, on the mitten because it's upside down when you're knitting it. It is so much easier to knit this pattern in the round. The ends are so much easier to catch and so much neater. And it's actually really nice, I think, because it almost makes it a thicker fabric. So your hands are warmer when you're wearing these mittens. The other thing is my gauge is slightly larger than what the pattern suggests. So I'm I'm not going to make these quite as long. The other thing that I noticed about these is that the little snowflake accents that are both on my sweater and on the bonnet, in those color charts, there were always three rows apart. And these are very inconsistent. One was three, one was four, the next one's five. Not really sure why, but it also leads me to believe that if you wanted to change the pattern for the sweater and the bonnet to make it four rows in between rather than three and make color work a lot easier on yourself, then go for it. Because apparently they also weren't very consistent, at least when it came to the mittens. I'm going to continue knitting on my mittens. And so far I have successfully made a left and a right one. So I'm just gonna keep knitting in the round until I get to the top of these mittens and then we can discuss how that went in just a little bit. Good morning. I don't think I showed you what I worked on yesterday, but I ended up finishing one of my two mittens. I did end up abandoning doing alternating rows between them because I had changed the pattern so much for my left glove for my right or my right for my left. I don't know. Uh, then it got really confusing. So one mitten is done. It's quite large, but that should hopefully be nice and I can wear maybe like gloves on my mittens and keep my hands extra warm and so today I'm going to be working on finishing up this mitten and then hopefully I can do some weaving in of the ends. So let's get some more knitting done today. I am also making some French onion soup because on like a cold day like today that just sounds like the perfect way to warm up and it smells so good. I'm caramelizing the onions right now so I might show you how that turned out a little bit later too. French onion soup really hit the spot and I'm so glad we have leftovers because that's going to be perfect because I'm hoping to be able to take all these accessories out in the snow tomorrow. I finished the body of my right mitten and I am just about halfway done with the thumb. So the next thing that you'll see is the whole finished snow outfit out in the snow. <laughs>
absolutely fantastic time not just knitting this whole ensemble but also wearing it out in the snow but before I leave you there's one more thing that we have to do in this video and that is record my ski accessories in my knitting journal of course I used my new knitting journal stickers that I designed and made myself in order to both prompt what I was going to write and decorate my knitting journal page. I still have to add the picture and the yarn for this, but I think it turned out so lovely. If you'd like to have your own knitting journal stickers, then you can find the link to my Etsy shop down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you'll join me again for another knitting video very, very soon. Bye.